Hello guys. Welcome to Top Anime Sensei. This video is the continuation video after Invitation to Demon Lord. So if you have not watched it, then please watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further delay let's start. But before we start please like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. Tornado Blade was an area magic version of Wind Cutter. It cost a couple more magicules, but it could be used to attack multiple enemies in a specific area. Milam ambushed the people in charge of checking traps as they were walking at the front. After quickly injuring her opponents, she had left the scene before I cast the magic. The people to the rear of the squad had no clue what even happened. But as they became alerted, I followed up the attack with the wind cutter. It didn't affect Milam, and my magic took out the entire enemy squad. The enemies roared in rage upon realizing what was going on. They were, in other words, the challengers of the labyrinth. It looked like a relatively balanced group of adventurers this time. However, our experience and strength were both far superior to them. We took the initiative and took out the explorers within the enemy team. In order to make use of their being unaware of our presence, we made a preemptive attack using anti-group magic. Before discovering the enemy team, we would operate with invisibility magic applied. We would always see them coming first. Once we attacked, the invisibility spell would deactivate. But by that time, we would have downed at least one or two men. They were usually the mage or healer at the back of the team providing support. At this point, it's like the game had already been decided. As we came out of our invisibility spell, the enraged vanguards quickly discovered us and charged. Gahahaha. You are all too naive. Whoa. He he he. Don't even think about leaving this place. Veldora and Ramirez, fully immersed in their roles, handled the assault. Since there was no need for me to show up, I decided to hang back and just provide aid for the two of them. I also used analysis magic to investigate the warriors charging at us. There were red health bars above all of their heads which had dropped below half at that point. These people have less than half of their HP. Surely, you two would be enough to handle these guys? It wasn't that I was getting ahead of myself, just confirming the state of our enemies. Considering how things had developed, we had this one in the bag. Without the supporting aid from the back, the vanguard didn't stand a chance against Veldora and Ramirez. They had no defensive buff spell or healing. With their HP decreased, they had no chance. If this were a more cautious team, they would have had a barrier set up at all times. But it seemed that the team wasn't really that type. And so, Veldora and Ramirez happily slayed the three remaining foes. It was an easy win. With Milam's sneak attack on top of my magic, we were able to take out the scout and the rear guards, and that was our G strategy. However, we'd been picking too many fights lately, and it was inefficient. Even though the challenger's strategies hadn't been perfected, there were certainly more people thinking about them. The labyrinth challengers weren't stupid. They were trying hard every day to improve as well. While that was certainly pleasant to hear, we also had to reconsider our engagement strategy with them. The battle was over. I'd seen this scene a million times at this point. Amazing. These rookies were no match for us either. Woohihiha, that's it, we are the strongest, the invincible. Gahahahaha, those rookies weren't even enough as my appetizers. My companions had gotten smug enough to brag about their achievement. Do you want to know what we were up to all this time? That goes without saying, we were using labyrinth challengers as the test subjects for our strategies. We all loved learning and had been studying tirelessly every single day. Um, but what about the whole Green Rebellion deal from last time? It had been a great win, but we weren't satisfied just yet. We hadn't seen the Team Green Rebellion ever since, either. They were apparently called back by their home nation, possibly never to return. With that being said, it might also have been because they had difficulty obtaining new gear for new floors. I was not sure whether they would return one day or not, but we had to get ready to fight them, nonetheless. That's why, even if we had defeated Green Rebellion, we were going to keep roaming the labyrinth in secret to fight off challengers. In addition another reason was the increased popularity of the labyrinth. Several days had passed after our fight to the death with the Green Rebellion. Masayuki's party managed to break through floor 49. Masayuki was the real lucky star as he managed to collect the Ogre Weapon Series. With it they successfully defeated the Tempest Serpent. And now they aimed to challenge floor 50. With Masayuki's party making it beyond floor 49. The other challengers became much more motivated. We publicized the video footage of the Guardian fight as a test and it was received very well. We used the video projector to record the fight between Masayuki's team and the Tempest Serpent. It became a hot topic even within the town as people kept on requesting to replay the clip. 
There was money to be made with this, Muir Miles and I thought to ourselves, there was no television in this world, so the battle footage within the labyrinth was considered to be top-tier entertainment, but obviously considering the potentially gruesome scenes that would be showcased, we considered editing the footage beforehand. However some people seemed to prefer the uncut version, therefore there was some room reserved for negotiation in that regard, mainly depending on how much the people asking would pay. There were also issues regarding the broadcasting rights, portrait rights etc., all of the cumbersome formalities were handed to Muir Miles. Masayuki's smile could probably be its own merchandise, that patented smile alone would earn us a sweet sum of money, in that way Masayuki would get some benefit, and Muir Miles and I would also be counting cash, apart from learning from the mistakes, we were also looking forward to the future development of the labyrinth. The video footage was not limited to the video directly recorded by the magic item, we had actually saved a lot of things, Rafael San also extracted a large amount of data from the labyrinth, by conducting analyze and assess, on it, it was possible to recreate the images, we also made video compilations of cool performances by the challengers and broadcasted them. They turned out to be a big hit, some people were even saying, thanks to this footage I got to have a girlfriend. Many people who wanted to become famous were tempted to give it a try, even people who weren't serious before, began to put in some hard work. I mean I knew the feeling. Even though it might be cruel to say this, at least they put in more effort. But in front of them was a high wall called reality, don't be too idealistic just yet. On the nation of giving tough love to our contestants, we began to interfere with the challenger's progress. Nowadays we were called the dungeon dominators, feared by all, our appearance also had some drastic changes. The ghost controlled by me now had Yuki surrounding it, engulfed in purple and white flames. A fire aura. I found this to be a very stylish look for me. As for Veldora's skeleton swordsman, all of his bones were renewed, seeing how Ramirez's armor changed, Veldora wanted to renew his bones as well. I asked him what he wanted and he responded rather recklessly, that a gold skull suits me better. I was just going to ignore his request at first. But since I also had Diablo's request to handle, I tried to change my perspective on the matter, and thought that I could use Veldora as an experiment for temporary flesh replacement. I wanted to test the metallic skeleton body's abilities, so I decided to exchange that with Veldora's avatar. Ordinary gold wasn't very strong, that was why I decided to utilize the strongest material I had available instead, though it was still in the experimental phase. It happened to be golden as well, so I decided to go ahead with it, it was called Orichalcum, a special alloy refined from a mixture of magisteel and gold, while also infused with an unusually dense concentration of magicules. I wanted to combine the immutability of gold on top of the traits of Magisteel. The result was very successful not just in terms of strength, the overall performance of Orichalcum exceeded Magisteel. It was an incredible metal, and so Orichalcum was born. The problem with it however was the difficulty of its production, gold itself was already rare and could not be produced en masse. However this time I humored Veldora's request which was why I spent a hefty sum of money making the orichalcum and fabricating the humanoid skeleton. As with Ramirez's outfit all we needed was a master core since it didn't matter what type of skeleton we had installed for Veldora, and in the blink of an eye the golden skeleton swordsman was born in the labyrinth. I closely observed Veldora's skeleton swordsman to examine its durability, as well as any potential flaws. Milam's reputation on the other hand, was even more far-reaching, people were all afraid of the infamous Crimson Comet, with her abnormal speed her afterimage looked like a red comet. She abandoned all her techniques besides speed and focused on landing critical hits to achieve victory, this fighting style instilled fear and made her a legend. Ramirez's style also changed slowly, she became the brawn type and had been giving off an ominous energy around her, she glowed with purple flames, her heavy animated armor was enveloped in an aura of death, her avatar might be stronger than her. No never mind. For the sake of Ramirez's own reputation, it was best to let matters lie. And so in a span of a few days, we all became famous. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched the previous parts, then please watch them. The links are in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates.